I'm a Technology Enhanced Learning Advisor at Manchester Met. Um, we're just going to take you through some of the work that we've been doing over the last um, five years and dipping into some of the learning analytics that we're certainly currently working with and how that is driving some institutional change in terms of uh, driving the adoption of templates within uh, Manchester Met. Um, this is the, the kind of work that we've been doing over the last five years, so it's a very topical, uh, hesitate to use the word roadmap, but it's a, a tube map. Um, and this is the, the overall thing that we've, we've been doing over the last five years. So we've been with Moodle for five years now, and the large part of that at early doors was through, was around integration. So we did a lot of work with integrating with university systems, our student record system, our coursework receipting system, um, our library system through Talis Aspire. We developed a lot of um, web APIs that pulled in um, services for students within Moodle as our, our VLE. And that was to make the VLE the very hub of the, uh, the student experience. Um, indeed, the, uh, Professor Mark Stubbs, who heads up our learning and research technologies, came up with this concept of wrapping the institution around the learner, uh, and that's essentially what we've tried to do over the last um, four or five years with Moodle. Since then, we've, uh, we've kind of moved on a little bit uh, towards trying to close the loop, really, and make the um, leverage data from the VLE and use that data to drive um, our quality enhancement and quality assurance procedures um, and to make informed uh, decisions about what we were trying to do in terms of training and indeed development of our, our Moodle platform. So the last two years we've, we've done a lot of work around leveraging data out of our VLE but also we have a, an institutional student survey which runs triannually uh, and that is um, surveys the whole of the, the university, which is about 35,000 students across eight faculties. And we leverage out of them about, in each iteration, usually around 47 to 48,000 free text comments that we, we then analyze. Um, that analysis is, is done in a, in a thematic way, um, and it's quite a labor-intensive uh, process. Um, but what that does give us at the, the higher level is we started to look at um, what our students were saying about their experience within Moodle at the institution and looking at some of the, the data that we got out. The top part of the graph is what the students were saying was really good. Uh, the lower part of the graph was uh, what students thought needed improvement. Uh, and you can see that we got some, some fairly strong themes that started to emerge. Uh, the red one, uh, in the middle, uh, it was all around kind of Moodle organisation, um, resources within Moodle. So that's a kind of area that we, we started to focus upon. Uh, we then wanted to dig a little bit deeper, and we also were using Tableau, <laughs> so you'll recognise that. Um, and this is, a, this is a, a screenshot from some of our uh, thematic analysis. So we have themes down the, the side, and across uh, the top, those are departments within the, the institution, which I've uh, made anonymous to protect the innocent. Um, and this allowed us to identify particular areas that were needed development or indeed needed, um, were exhibiting good areas of practice that we could then investigate further. Uh, and that was with a, a, a number of reasons, really. We wanted to identify areas of good practice where we could go and get case studies. Uh, that we could then uh, exhibit to, to other academics within the institution. Uh, but also it allowed us to, to, to focus on um, developments within uh, the VLE as well. Uh, running alongside the, that uh, thematic analysis, we've now got two dashboards. We've got a, a, a CMI dashboard, which is a continuous monitoring and improvement dashboard, and a student engagement monitoring dashboard. And those take all the data from within the VLE and present it back to each academic on a unit by unit basis so that they can see things like progression, um, attendance of their students, to try and uh, pinpoint when students might be struggling and they, they can intervene. So that's where we're trying to go with that. Um, another aspect of it as well is that we have a, an automated Moodle audit tool 
which will trawl our VLE and it will um, generate um, a sort of score around compliance against a number of certain thresholds. Um, and that gives us the ability to now develop things that are evidence-based that we can then push towards our um, academics in terms of training. The first of those is a, is a Moodle Good Practice Checklist, uh, which my colleague Paul will talk about in a moment. And from that, we then developed, started to develop some, some Moodle templates that we've started to roll out across the institution that were developed on the back of some of the analytic work that handed over. So I shall pass over to Paul, who will take you through the, the Moodle checklist. Uh, yeah, just reflecting on uh, Chris's introduction there, um, quite clearly uh, the student voice is extremely powerful as a, um, a consideration, as a, an influencer. Uh, in terms of looking at the decisions to look at the phase introduction of uh, our templates, it doesn't sit alone though, it also sits alongside uh, other considerations as well, uh, none more so than the automated uh, Moodle audit that uh, Chris described a little earlier on, uh, as well as uh, some of the uh, supporting guidance that we offer to some of our academics by way of a, a good practice checklist. Uh, some of these uh, might appear to be sort of fairly obvious statements. In fact, wandering around the room before we began, I had a quick look at some of the, the Moodle posters, and uh, there is one in particular right at the back that sort of underpins some of these uh, good practice recommendations that we're going to be talking about. So uh, essentially, just as, as a recap, um, in terms of the um, um, types of considerations that we've used in order to think about introducing templates, clearly the power of student voice is at the utmost of our thinking, but it doesn't sit alone, it sits alongside um, other important considerations. So again, just going back to that thematic analysis for, for one moment, uh, there are lots of uh, things that we can pick out of it. And what we've chosen to do is to pick those things where, as a team, we have some degree of control and influence in terms of making quick wins and changes that will impact that learning experience. Uh, remembering as well, I think Chris mentioned, uh, almost 47,000 unsolicited comments made by students. They could have said anything that they want about their student experience and also about improvements they'd like to see within it. And what they've chosen to do in many cases is to illustrate and surface some of their experiences that relate to the use of the learning platform. So for us, those messages at a departmental level as well as faculty are quite compelling and things that we need to listen to. Uh, just choosing three of those, and we can see them numbered. In fact, uh, part of our thematic analysis, we had probably about uh, 20 coded areas for uh, best practice as well as uh, improvement. But these are some of the improvement areas. I'm not going to read through them, but they are about how we can look at improving uh, and rounding uh, communication with our students, uh, looking at the, the timeliness of uh, uh, re resource release within the, the platform itself, uh, and also look at the way in which our Moodle courses are structured for signposted learning, which would help, obviously, um, scaffold the, the learning experience. Um, so we've taken those. Uh, and we've also considered um, other things as well, probably like your own organisations. Uh, you have thresholds or content standards that uh, sit at an institutional level, and uh, MMU is, is no stranger to that either. Uh, what we have is, is four broad areas, and as we can see just on the slide, it sits around uh, reading lists, um, submission points, uh, also, announcements, which are what we use critically for our uh, important communications, uh, and, and also aspects of content. Uh, some of those support the QA process that might be about external examiner reports, uh, they could be about spec hangbooks, but also they're about critical learning resources as well. And as uh, Chris mentioned, we do have a tool, which is a bespoke script, that can do uh, a trawl to, to check for adherence, not really wanting to use the word compliance, more, more adherence to some of those threshold standards. Um, the script itself, as I said, is bespoke. It does an overnight trawl, and it produces this red, amber, green uh, illustration for us. Um, not wholly scientific, but it provides us with signposting where we can um, surface some really good practice. And at the same time, if we can see that there's uh, reds appearing at the unit level, then that's great signposting for us where we can intervene for um, directed support or maybe a consultation and recommendation of how a particular unit can be improved. 
Uh, Chris also mentioned that we have uh, sort of in our armory, as it were, and I'm sure you do as well, uh, guidance for academics on how they can manage and maintain their unit areas. Uh, some of these are not groundbreaking at all, and I, I won't go through each of those um, uh, particular areas, but some of them uh, are worth highlighting. Uh, one, first of all, uh, mentioning that the whole purpose of the, of the Moodle unit or the, the course itself and expectations of how it will be used, maybe in a flipped learning capacity or a blended learning capacity, sitting alongside campus delivery. I think that's really important to underscore that. Um, equally, uh, just in terms of uh, support mechanisms, you know, how you can contact your tutor out of hours, um, or also even things like navigation and readability. Um, I think Alex mentioned earlier on about, about DSA and the changes there. So making sure that you don't have strange yellow text with a purple background. You have very obvious things, but these are illustrations that we've included within a good practice guide that also sit around the notion of the need for us to seriously consider uh, institutional-wide adoption of templates. And obviously, this is what we've done. Uh, we've uh, considered this around these themes here, which is a, a welcome area. It's also looking at uh, an expression of what should be contained within the unit as critical information, and also making sure that uh, assessment is clearly signposted with overview as well as submission points. Uh, equally, we provide very clear recommendations on how each of the courses should be structured. And there's a degree of license there, whether it be thematic, whether it be weak number, uh, we leave that entirely up to our, our academic team. So I suppose this really moves us on to have a look at how we have uh, gone about uh, implementing in a phased way some of these templates across some of our department and faculty areas. I'm going to hand over to my colleague Steve, who's just going to talk us through um, some of the logistics of that. Thank you very much, Paul. Yeah, I'm Stephen Williams. I'm Technology Enhanced Learning Advisor for Health, Psychology and Social Care. Um, so I'm just going to go through the implementation of the templates. So we can see on the screen just on the left-hand side is the HPSC um, Moodle template, and that's the one within my faculty itself. Now, you can see most of these areas are basically just placeholders of text for staff to go into the template and they just add in their unit handbook in the exact same place as every other uh, unit within the program. Now, this just increases consistency for students as well as consistency for staff, because you may have five to 20 different staff members on uh, different units, and they all know where all the information should be at the same time. So you can see here, we introduced it across four separate faculties. Um, three entirely it was implemented, uh, whereas one just implemented it in one of their particular schools, and that was uh, science and engineering. Now, with this, it was more of a manual process of every unit we had in the 1415, when it went over to 1516, we manually put the template into all of those units, merging <coughs> the content with the templates. And then any new units that came in, we again, did the manual process for that. So you can see, as I've said there, the, uh, it's a good base for new staff. If you've got someone that's never used Moodle before, they can clearly see where their content should be, as well as useful resources for students to actually use. And again, just improve consistency for students throughout, as well as staff. So this is kind of the main area, um, kind of tying in all of our parts, the comparison between 1415 and 1516 ISS. Now, we can see at the bottom, the two graphs represent the orange is all of the 47,000 comments in both ISSs, and then the blue is where organisation was mentioned. So, 1415, we had 17% of students openly, completely unprompted, saying organisation is pretty good, but 12% were saying it's not, it could be improved. Whereas in this year's ISS, we can see that just over a quarter of students completely unprompted said the organisation is good, shown an increase in um, percentage there, as well as a decrease in the um, amount of students that wanted to see it improved. From here, we want to go on to focus groups, asking students specifically uh, what they want to see improved in terms of the organisation, um, and just ask specific questions based on that, as well as an institutional push for the templates across all of the units. Uh, I have mentioned then we would probably use an institution, institutional template to begin with, however, faculty by faculty, they'd have different needs that would obviously need to be applied throughout. 
Uh, that's all we have, so I'll let uh, Michael go next. Um, I think we're there. Thank you.